in this very room there's quite enough love for one like me and in this very room there's quite enough joy for one like me and there's quite enough hope and quite enough power to chase away any that one. Oh my goodness, you know, I was, I, I, I got my grandfather all over me today. I mean, you know, because I was talking about him going to church with him. That was one of his favorite, favorite songs. And thank you. You surprised me. I didn't know you were doing that one. It's, oh my goodness, that was such a beautiful tune. Such a beautiful tune. He would, he would just go, you could see him float when that song would, would, would come on. He was really wonderful. Thank you. I, I wanted to bring him up after the meditation because one of the things he, <coughs> he taught me how to garden. And uh, one of the things he would always do is after working really hard, at, you know, hoeing or raking or whatever, he would stop and he would just put his hands on the, on the hoe and just on the rake and just sit like this. I say, Papa, what are you doing? He says, you should always stop and take it all in and just look at it, you know? And that's one of the things about meditation. It's so really wonderful. It gives us a chance to stop and, and take it all in. 
you know. And if you have not been into meditative practice, these three minutes that you do each Sunday will get you started. And if you really enjoy it, we have a half, uh, well 20 minutes, right? 20 minutes of meditation that happens at uh, 10 o'clock. So come and partake in that because it's really a wonderful way to, to start your day. If you can start your day with, and, and I'm listening to a, um, a series right now, and it's on uh, mindfulness. And someone coined the phrase to call it not mindfulness, but to call it awarefulness. I think it's Deepak Chopra came up with this, awarefulness, you know, because mindfulness keeps you in your head, but awarefulness allows you to experience everything. And since we believe in wholeness, awarefulness really works for the science of mind teaching to stay aware of everything that's going on around you. So last week it was, I hear you this week, it's tell me more. Tell me more. And what this came from is last week I encouraged folks to listen for the deep call, to hear your deep self calling. It's a chant that a friend of mine, uh, Sandra Powell, wrote. Can you hear your deep self calling? Can you hear your deep self calling? Can you hear your deep self calling? Go within and deepen all the way if you can hear your deep self <laughs> really really <laughs> take that t michael rambo <laughs> yeah but if you can hear that deep call sometimes i don't know about you but sometimes i go like what was that <laughs> what did you say it gets a little confusing you, the deep call might tell you something that ooh, that's outside my comfort zone i may not be comfortable with that i don't know and that's where this tell me more comes from. The idea that maybe you're not sure what you heard, tell, tell the universe, tell me more. Because the universe loves to give. It wants to give you more. It's, it's, that's the self-givingness of the universe. It's all it's got to do. I mean, it's, al it's already the universe, right? I mean, that's big enough. It's already got the headline. So giving you something more gives it something to do. Because when you're already everything, it's hard to find something to do, <laughs> you know? So it's really nice. So how do we go about hearing this? How do we go about listening? How do we go about telling more, tell, having the universe tell us more? Well, how is a really great way to work it out. How? Be honest, be open, be willing, worthy, and whole. Oh, that's a lot of Ws. That's how. How? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know how to say how. So the first part of how that came to me as I was contemplating this talk, and I, I contemplated this talk so much this week that it took until last night for it to actually unload. <laughs> I've been talking all month about, I'm going to write my talk on Thursday. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to write my talk on Thursday. Well, Thursday was Saturday this week. <laughs> and it did evolve. And it was interesting that evolve came to mind because that's how. You see, what we have to do, once we hear that deep call, once we understand what's going on, we may have to evolve into it. And that includes some involving. And that brings us to a science of mind principle. We must comply with the law. Dr. Holmes tells us, look at this, he says, we must learn how it works and comply with the way it works. He's talking about the law here. We must comply with the way it works and learn how it works. And how it works is it first asks us to become involved. And that's the listening part. Get involved. Feel what's going on. Understand what's happening for you. And then once you become involved, then you get to move from the thought to the thing. The thought to the thing. That's how it works. It moves from thought to thing, from cause to effect, from the word that you speak to inform the law as to what to do in your life. See, that, that means that we have to understand our purpose. Once we understand our purpose and we speak our word, then the law can go about executing that word and bring it into manifestation in our life as we listen. As we listen. So let's go into it. The first thing we had to listen to is we had to listen to ourselves. We must be honest with ourselves. Know thyself. Who said that? Socrates. They said Socrates said it. Maybe the Oracle of Delphi said it. It's been said a lot. It's been said a lot. But Socrates is the guy that gets credit for it. Now I'm going to do it anyway. So Socrates, <laughs> I ran across this the other day. It might be old. I'll try it anyway. So Socrates had three uh, criteria for when you should tell something. He wanted to know, is it truthful, is it useful, and is it, uh, is it uh, uh, good? Is it good, is it true, is it good, and is it useful? And this came up when one of his students came to him one day and said, I have something I want to tell you. And the student said to him, um, Socrates said to him, okay, well, first off, it has to pass these three tests. So 
is what you're going to tell me true? And the disciple, the student said, I'm not sure it's true. Oh, okay, well, let's go for the second test. Is it good? Hmm, I'm not sure when you hear this, it'll be good. <laughs> All right, well, is it going to be useful? Well, if it's not good, it's probably not going to be useful. <laughs> so he didn't say it. What he did say is, wow, Socrates, I understand now why you're such a great philosopher and such a wonderful teacher. But we might also understand why Socrates never got to find out that Plato was messing around with his wife. <laughs> <coughs> Know thyself, though. Get back. Get, come back. Come back, folk. Know thyself. It requires sometimes having a, a, a Macaulay Culkin moment. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Be home alone. Be home with the spirit. Understand that there is something informing you and listen for it. Because Dr. Holmes tells us that God speaks to the heart through a language of feeling, a feeling which is affirmative. Now, this is very important. See, when we get quiet, we can get in tune with our feelings. We can get beyond the, the mind that tells us what is right and what is wrong. It's in the judgmental space. That's too loud. That's too hot. That's too soft. The Goldilocks story, we all know it, right? We can get beyond that. We can get quiet and get to the place of knowing ourselves so that we can ask to be hearing more. And once we get that feeling, the universe, which, as I said, is so big, it just has nothing else to do but to, s to give you what, it, what you want, right? It, but it only can do that once you get to that feeling space because the universe is so big that it hasn't really spent a lot of time learning English. It only learns feelings. It understands what you feel, how you feel, what's going on for you deep down inside. Not like I'm feeling grumpy today, although that's part of it. It's the, I feel really aligned with this idea. This excites me. This lifts me up to do this particular thing. Once you can get that, then you can move into the next place. Become open to it. Become open to this idea. Become open to following the guidelines of your intuition. We get our intuition shut down so easily in life, so many times. I mean, it took me, you know, 50, I'm not, 58 years to get to the point where I would sing in front of a bunch of people. And you guys kind of, you kind of like, went, oh, you clapped. And I was like, wow, that was really great. But that didn't even matter. It was the fact that I actually really always wanted to sing, and I did. You see, that's what, that's the feeling that gives me the sense of joy and satisfaction, that Patrick had these books in him, and he writes, that John writes these books, and he has his poetry going on, and he writes that Mark, that, that Mark wants to sing, and so he sings in front of a congregation now on a regular basis. Whatever it is that you got to do inside you, you let this thing out, because that's really all it's all about, you see. Follow that intuition. Open up your senses, and that requires cultivating the silence. Cultivating the silence. There's um, a goddess, a Greek goddess. Everybody claims her. Greek goddess, ancient wisdom goddess, Gnostic goddess. I like the Gnostic goddess, so we're going to give it to the Gnostic, Gnostics. It's called Siege. Siege. And she says silence equals power. One of her followers, or Dr. Mary Pritchard, wrote this. In the stillness that lives within you, you find all the answers you seek. Can you be still? and unmoving until the mud settles and the water is clear. You know that one, right? Can you be that still so that the right action arises by itself? And if you think about that, that I, I don't know if it's a Zen Kwan or Koan or whatever, but if you think about the muddy water and you're looking into it and you wait for it to settle and become clear, and then you wait for the right action to arise. If you're looking into a clear, still pool of water, what will arise when it gets clear is your own image. You can look at your reflection. You'll see yourself. So in the stillness, you seek the answers, and the answer you will seek is you. It's your truth. It's who you really are. And the universe is so excited to tell you more that it's absolutely ready to reveal to you what is there. So invite the soul of the universe into your heart. Invited to help you discover your purpose. And bless you if you have found it. That's awesome. I know many of us have. And keep doing it. And know that you can even expand and grow beyond that. Because the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. So you can continue to improve <laughs> whatever it is you're doing. Right? <laughs> don't sit on your butts. Right? Don't be rest. Okay, sit here on your butts. But don't, you know what I mean. Don't rest on your laurels. There's always a place to stretch and to move beyond whatever it is. 
you know? That's what makes Andy so good at what he's doing. You know, he tries, he stretches beyond where he's going, beyond what he's doing, and it makes it all that much better for us. We must become willing to do that. You see, honest, open, willing. This is how you get the universe to tell you more. In the Science of Mind textbook, it's written uh, by Dr. Holmes. He's going into first person. So this is one of those moments where he gets mystical and starts writing. And he says, I have only to open the portals of my soul and accept that which is ready to express through me. Just open up. Open up the portals of your soul and be ready to express that which is lying within you just dying to come out. If you feel any kind of funkiness about getting up in the morning, if you wake up tired in the morning, no matter how late you went to bed the night before, if you wake up so tired you don't want to get up, if you're on your way to work and the whole time you're thinking, I should go to the beach, if that's your energy around what you're doing, there's, an, there's something inside of you saying, I'm not living my soul's purpose. Now, it's okay to work at what you're doing and make the money that you need to make. Let's get real. We're in the world. We got bills to pay. You can still do that and live your soul's purpose until your soul's purpose becomes so big that you go in the office and say, you know, um, I quit. And you leave and you go <laughs> do what it is you want to do. You know, I'm not saying don't go out and quit your job right away. I mean, if you feel that, if you feel that, if, if the urge said that to you, okay, but don't blame me <laughs> when the bills don't get paid. Pay your bills. You know, don't want to, don't be like some of us. We're like, oh, I'm not going to answer that call. No, no, don't be like that. Get the bills paid. But you can know that you can move. You can transition into more joy in your life. It's just, it's just a very simple thing to do. Remember, what does the universe want to do? Tell you more. Now, one of the easiest things to do in this listening is to forget how worthy we are. Here's another W for you. Worthy. You see, this intuitive voice that we're listening to we must not only know it and trust it, but we must believe that we are worthy of moving forward through the answer. And you are worthy because you are divine. We have been created by an infinite intelligent presence. And if you are infinite and infinitely intelligent, then why would you mess around making a mistake? It just doesn't, it doesn't make sense, you see. For something that's smart to make a mistake, even the mistake must have some kind of intelligence behind it, so then it's not a mistake. So therefore, you are not a mistake. Even if you're working in that job that makes you want to go to the beach instead of go to work, that's not a mistake. That's just something to give you the energy and the propulsion to move towards your dreams. So you get, uh, you know, if, the, if you walk around long enough with the itch in your, the thing in your shoe, the rock in your shoe, there comes a point where you will take your shoe off and shake the rock out. You know, so sometimes we got to get to that space and sometimes the uncomfortable feeling is what's going on. Right. And so in this idea, I want you to understand that you are worthy of living your dream, of living to the highest level of experience of joy in your life. That's what this whole thing is all about. That's why you got the urge within you anyway. And then this made so much sense to me when I listened to this line again from Jesus where he says, fear not little flock, it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And I was like, wow, fear not little flock. So I went to uh, one of my favorite books, the Metaphysical Dictionary that Fillmore, Charles Fillmore wrote, where he went down through all the different words and he went through the past history and stuff. I mean, I'd love to do that myself, but who has that kind of time? He did, he didn't have Facebook, Google, and all that other kind of stuff, right? <laughs> He didn't have Netflix where you could binge watch uh, Breaking Bad. He didn't have that kind of stuff. <laughs> so he had time to look through all the ancient texts and figure out that little flock, flock means they're little thoughts. It's the crazy little thoughts in your head. That's the little flock. Fear not the little crazy thoughts in your head, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom is your mind. And if you clear your, if you don't worry about the little crazy thoughts and you accept the good pleasure gift, which is your mind, your kingdom, what you're left with are the good thoughts, the thoughts that propel you into your experience of joy. In other words, the worthy thoughts. You are worthy. It's already set up there. It's kind of in code, but I just decoded it for you. <laughs> so once you understand that you're worthy, then it's easy to go from there to understanding how whole you are. And I'm not talking about, well, I am talking about the whole. It's the same whole. I love the Ikea analogy I came up with some time ago. You go to Ikea and you buy the bookshelf and everything you need for the bookshelf is there, right? 
You put the bookshelf together, and it's standing up, and the books are on it. What's this screw for? <laughs> the whole thing was there, and it's working, but there's a screw missing. Some of us are living our lives, and it looks like it's working, but there's a screw missing. It's the, it's the joy. It's the, it's the perfect experience of happiness. It's that next level. It's the stretching beyond the comfort zone. That's the screw. Put it in there, and you'll find that it'll stand up that much stronger. You know? Don't be an Ikea missing screw person. So when your wholeness, in your wholeness, in your oneness, you got to come to it fully orbed. You can't come lukewarm. You can't come like tap it to this stuff. You got to come hot. You got to like the, like the plane say, I'm coming in hot. You got to come in like that with it, you see. You got to know that you know what you know and live like you know that you know it. Don't ask me to ever repeat that. <laughs> That's not written here. It says, no, we know. That's all it says. No, we know. I don't know where all that other stuff came from. But we cannot be iffy. We can't be sketchy about this. We got to know that we are worthy. Know that we are whole. Know that we can put in the missing screw and know that we are one with the divine. That it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. If you haven't read Living the Science of Mind, come take the class, Tools of Transformation, on Tuesday. It's open for another two weeks. How about that for a plug? Yeah. Come take the class, Tools of Transformation, Tuesday night. It's really fun. And you'll, live, you'll look at the Science of Mind living book. And here's a quote from it. When we know that there is but one spirit in the entire universe, we shall know that there is but one source for all forms. When we know that there is but one spirit in the entire universe, we shall know that there is but one source for all forms. As we understand our wholeness and know that there's just this one universal presence, that we are part of that one universal presence, that idea that we get, the tell me more idea that comes to us is ready to be made manifest in our life from that same source as we understand that we are worthy and accepting of it as we do not come from our lukewarmness you know the cosmologist Brian Swim calls the universe an all nurturing abyss it's a neat idea all nurturing abyss all nourishing abyss that's what it is all nourishing abyss and here's how this works in the abyss things evaporate dissolve and then they come back again and when they come back again the nourishing part of the universe blows them up into the manifestations of your dreams come true you see so when we are living from that space of wholeness and oneness we are activating the unseen ocean of potentiality and making it actuality that's our joy and why not do this I mean let's test the intelligence of the universe. After all, we are religious scientists. So it's our job to go out and test this stuff. Try it out. If it doesn't work, try it out again. That's what a good scientist does. We don't fall down on the first experiment. We just go, okay, we won't do that way again. We'll try it a different way. We say yes to something else. So that's all we get to do. We get to do that because we know how. We know how to stay open. We know how to uh, be willing. We know that we are worthy. We know that we are whole. And as we do that, we get to know thyself and smile at ourselves and really enjoy who and what we really are. Are you ready to ask the universe to tell you more? All right. This week, listen. Go into the gap. Go into the silence and say, tell me more. Yes, tell me more. Oh, yeah. And tell me some more. Mm. And so it is. <laughs>Here it is for you again. Today's affirmation. Instagram it, Facebook it, Twitter it, however you do it. Here it is. Let's do it all together. Ready? One, two, three. I am open to the gifts of wisdom, energy, and more flowing from the font of universal love. I accept right here, right now. All right. And the other thing I want to add to you is when you're doing things for us, when you're posting things for our center, make sure you put the hashtag CSL Simi Valley. Hashtag CSL Simi Valley. Hashtags, you know how they work? They're kind of like a file cabinet, see? And so then we can find all of our stuff universally. Just put in the hashtag num name, and then everything that's been posted about us shows up on your pages. It's a great way to do it.
Put your affirmation on. Hashtag CSL Simi Valley. All right. So let's go into prayer, folks. How about this, huh? Mm -hmm. I'm feeling some pray time coming on. Coming on. Again. My favorite prayer, thank you. Gratitude, that's the number one thing. Ernest Holmes says gratitude is most salutary. At first I thought, oh, gratitude is like saying hi, but then I looked it up. Salutary means healthy. Gratitude is most health-inducing. So if that's the prayer you can do today, that's great. But if you're working through a challenge in your life, if you've lost someone dear in your life, if you're working, uh, waiting for that perfect uh, situation to unfold to lead to more health for you, if you're looking for the right job, if you've already heard the call and it says, I need to move in a new direction, activate that by accepting that truth for yourself right now. Here we go. So I recognize there is one life. That life is God. That life is my life and the life of everyone here listening and watching. And we know that life is good and very good. For as we have already been reminded, it is the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom and it is our pleasure to accept so in this moment we accept the good we accept the right actions the divine unfoldment the peace and the harmony the joy and the happiness the love the acceptance the guidance the wisdom the intelligence of the divine we know that there is something within us at the very cellular level that knows what to do, when to do it, where to do it, and how to do it, and it is doing it now in our lives, right now. We need not wait. We accept in this moment. And then we stand strong in the worthiness and the willingness to step fully into our wholeness and our oneness with the divine. How wonderful it is to know this truth how glorious it is to have a teaching that doesn't always sit around preaching, but instead reveals, explains, and shows the way. As the early followers of Jesus were called, the followers of the way, we follow the way into our happiness. And so that brings us a sense of joy and satisfaction so that we can say, thank you, Mother, Father, God. Thank you, Infinite Presence. Thank you, Divine Spirit. And we now release this word spoken into the perfect law, which is so willing to say yes, as it does right now. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you.